Previously on RSHK. Let me, let me get the truth serum. All right. Yeah. I'm, okay. gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take some truth serum for you guys, all right? I'm rich as fuck. I'm just fucking embezzling from you. <laughs> a minute and a half in. I think we sent it here. It's the best we've ever done. I'm saying, like, even if you're not famous, like, even if you have, like, you know, 5,000 followers or whatever, you know, people that, like, you know, listen to what you're saying, you know, you can literally have an affiliate link to any product ever. Like, when my personal love for music, and I just, like, I fucking hate that shit. Exactly. Only for exactly. Nick. Only for Nick, though. It's so funny. Me as a wedding DJ, I want to be better than all the club DJs. Like, I want to be the best. I want to be the shit. Like, so like however I can get there, I like I'm down I'm, I wanna put in the work and I wanna get there. Like I don't wanna get I don't wanna get club gigs just because I have clout. Like I wanna get club gigs because I'm good. Now back to the show. Did this hustle did, did, mentality of Nick's finale like just come within like the past like ten years or were you always like was like eight year old Nick Spinelli and like fifteen year old Nick Spinelli or was that the same type of like yeah, like four no, two. Did always, you you always had this like yeah, I have always. to be the best at everything. Not that they, and there's nothing wrong with that, but there are some people that learn that later in life. Yeah, you know, I always like uh, early on my motivation was money. So like I fell in love with money early, and I always like worked hard, you know. And like I, I got my first job when I was thirteen, and like you know, like you know, had a bunch of jobs, and you know, any way I can make money or you know, flip this or do that. Like as a, as a, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, like, you know, like that's what I did serving tables or whatever. Like I was always like, you know, money was my motivation. I, but I didn't, um, I didn't truly want to be the best at something until like I started playing drums. And then like, that's when like I fell in love with drums and that's when I was like, all right, I want to be the shit at drums. And I worked really hard at that. And like, I got pretty good at drums and we did that thing. But then when that didn't work out, DJing replaced that. And then like, so when DJing truly replaced that and like, I like took a step back and I was like, all right, well, DJing is my thing now. Like I'm going to hang up these drumsticks and like, I'm going to be a DJ. Then like, I was all in. I was like, I want to be the fucking shit at this, like whatever it takes. And then I've been, I've been at it ever since. So like, I think for me, you know, I didn't have that hustle, hustle mentality. Like I had a hustle mentality for money because I love money, but like the true hustle mentality didn't happen until I fell in love with something, yeah. you know? And I, and I think that's, that'll hit anybody. I don't care. Like you could say you're not a hustler. That's because you didn't fall in love with something yet. Like when you fall in love with something, like when you like, wow, this is like what I want to do. Then like, it's just like tunnel vision for me, man. Like you think there are people the, that never find that? Yeah, but it's a shame, and, and and there's a lot of reasons for that. You know, some people just play it safe and just like get a regular yeah. job, and it's like, listen, like I want benefits, I want to support my family, and I want to keep it safe and uh, and uh, you know and keep it pushing. And, and they home. and they push the other stuff to the side, you know, and it's a shame, and especially like with the internet and stuff, you can make any profession work, you can make anything. You know, it breaks my heart to see people work jobs that they don't like um, just for the money. It's like the worst way you can live, you know, like living to people, die, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. and. It's just like, it's like, it's, you know, when it comes to like happiness and all that, you know, um, they say like money doesn't buy happiness. Like big thing with money, you know, that I kind of realized number one, like obviously you want to do what you love to do. And if you do what you love, like, you know, life is great. Right. Sure. But when it comes to like money buying happiness and stuff, I think like the major key is like money buys freedom. Like when, when you make a lot of money, then like you're able to like afford the freedom to like not have to work. And that's when your true that's where the happiness comes from like money buys freedom like you know when when you when your bills are fucking paid and you can and and then you and you also love your job on top of it and then you just pick and choose when you want to work or whatever and then in between you just have a great time and have the freedom to just hang out with your family or like you know like that's where the happiness comes from and you know that's what i've always kind of like strived for you know so you were talking about the uh social media you can you know, kind of make a living off social media. And I think we, I can't remember if he hit record before or after or whatever, but you were talking about um, you know, making money off social media and you've obviously are in that field where your YouTube channel, and I've been watching you for a very long time, very long time. Well, before Nick Spinelli was getting Missy Elliott to comment on his videos and I'll get there in a second appreciate you, bro. on that. But I, and I always appreciated your videos because, and I'll just be blunt. Like we always are in the show. There are a lot of videos out there with a lot of DJs that tell a lot of dumb fucking shit. And a lot of them are in DJ idea sharing. Just throwing that out there. Um, sure. But when I came across and stumbled across your stuff, you know, it, like there's stuff that you've said to me on a video, and I literally walk in this office and go, "Okay, I was doing it all wrong." Like, like we get we gotta we gotta do the like we gotta do it the Nick Spinelli way. 
Um, why do you even care to give, why did you start to care to, I guess, school the DJ industry? I guess maybe that's the kind of the terminology we should use. Like, well, what okay. gave you the drive to go, I'm just going to start creating videos and, you know, helping DJs to get booked. Go I got hired at SEE and I uh, was up against however many DJs were at SE at the time that had uh, catalogs of content, catalogs of logs, hundreds literally of like all the content you can imagine to get booked. And I, I start with SE and I'm like, how the fuck am I going to get booked for SE when all these guys have all this content out there? Like, you know what I mean? Like I have nothing. And like, I really can't. And I was also in a position where like, I couldn't use any content from like my last company because like my boss was super fucking butt hurt that I left. Right. So like, there was nothing I can do. I was in a tough spot. So, um, I fucking, I chilled, you know, I fucking slept on it. I smoked on it. I was like, what the fuck am I going to do here? How the fuck am I going to get booked against all these guys? And then I thought to myself, well, I have some very strong opinions about weddings and how to DJ and the yada, yada, yada. Right. What if I made some videos, right? And I set a goal. I said, I'm going to make 10 tip videos, each one about a different tip about how I prepare for weddings, what I do for weddings, whatever. And some of it's like more on the controversial side, I guess, whatever, but it's cool. Like I put it out there and I was like, I'll put these out there. And then at least, cause like you have to like, I like I couldn't make wedding vlogs because I didn't have any weddings for SE yet. Like I right. like I was a year away from any weddings that got booked, right? Because you book ahead of time, right? So I was like, fuck for that whole year. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna make these tip videos, and then hopefully the couples. I made the tip videos for SE Vancouver's YouTube channel, and I was like, hopefully the couples can see my tip videos, and then see me giving other DJs tips, and then maybe agree with what I'm saying, or maybe just as a whole you know, think, no, well, this guy must know what he's talking about because he's making tip videos and then book me because of that. So that's the reason why I started tip videos. It was literally just to get myself booked. Like, you know what I mean? And it worked. And, but like, honestly, by, by, by the second video, I, I was hooked. I was like, oh my God. Like, I didn't, not that like, I didn't get any play. No one gave a shit at first, but like, I was just like, oh my God, like, this is fun. Like, actually, I really like, and I really like kind of fell in love with making videos and like, put my my uh my you know my opinions out there and everything else and uh and You're i got very, into yeah, it you don't you do love your opinions i mean and i know that there are people that you know sometimes don't like you giving your opinion and some people really love and your it, opinion and I that's also, what's fun about it to see the reactions from some people and like uh, you know to just to put it out there just to have like a platform any platform even when i was like super small you know so like I, I just i fell in love with it and i just i was all in i made like 30 something videos for the sc of anchor youtube page and then at that point, that's when I decided to pivot. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to make my own YouTube channel for vlogs. And I started right. vlogging on my own YouTube channel. And then once the pandemic hit, I was like, well, what the fuck? I got nothing to vlog. Then I started doing my DJ tip videos on my on my actual channel. And then I built the channel up. So, like, I started my YouTube channel as it is now. Yeah. I started that in uh, August of 2019. That's when I bought my first camera. So I want to give a credit where credit's due. Uh, you were on the Hot Cues podcast with Nate and Tony. Uh, and you said that breaking your leg was one of the best things that ever happened to you. My God. Like, By you, a long can shot. Can you kind of talk about that? And the, for those that maybe not have heard it on that. And, and again, if you have not heard it, please go to Hot Cues and listen as well. But like you, you breaking your leg, you were in Colorado, right? You were skiing. Well, you weren't skiing. Uh, you were in a par parking lot. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh at that. But I didn't like, and I oh, felt probably. bad. Because I, I got wind that you broke your leg before you had announced it. Like, you know, I, and, and whoever told me was like, yo, just don't say anything. Like, please. I was like, well, of course well, not. But like well, you broke your leg in a parking lot on ice or something, right? Yeah. Remember I said earlier, like, it's funny how life works out, right? Like life yeah. has a funny way of falling in place. And, you know, sometimes um, like I'm not religious at all, but man, like even Same. thinking out loud, like. The, the you know it's there's something hard, it's hard not to believe there's not something out there because it's unbelievable how shit works so some other force because it's fucking unbelievable like so yeah so um i go to colorado right we plan this trip out it's super fun we rent an airbnb you know we're having a great time um so we we, we uh we we snowboarded the first day it was a fucking great time i was fucking ripping um and then like and then uh, the next morning we wake up, you know, we get super high. We're in Colorado, so we're smoking these fucking crazy ass shits, right? Uh, I forget what the fuck they're called. Like Keef, uh, it's fucking oh, like a, a ball yeah. of wax uh, fucking rolled in Keef on top of a fucking other wax, whatever. Like, Jesus. 
I, yeah, I got bl- we got in, blasted. Blunt wrapped in all that. Yeah, yeah, it's just all fucked up, right? So, so like, stupid. we're getting blasted, right? We're eating our right. cereal in the morning. And then, like, we roll out to the parking lot, and I got a little pep to my step. I'm fucking excited. I'm walking to the fucking shuttle, and I slip, and, and I fall mm. back on my leg, and I break my leg. I know right away the fucking thing's broken. Nate's like, bro, get up, walk it off. I'm like, dude, this shit feels fucking different. Spiral fracture, widening of my ankle, surgery literally was out. I couldn't walk for three months, right? And then, like, I, and still dealing. I, I still deal with it today. Like, it's still not perfectly healed yet. It's fucking insane, this injury, right? Fucked up injury. Jesus. At the time, I'm like, oh, my God. I'm Game fucked. over. I'm fucked. Like, I'm <laughs> right, fucked. Right. I got to do. I bought a scooter. I'm doing these weddings with a scooter. This is terrible. <laughs> Wait. I fucking, I can't fucking do anything told for you myself. to get the scooter? You hit me up for the scooter. You did I tell was me like, you need I one of these motherfuckers. The Kevin, Wait, right Kevin away. don't you get a scooter? <laughs> he did tell me, yeah. The yeah. scooter, everything. But, like, it's insane how it changed my life. So, like. This was my second pandemic. So, uh, you know, so like, so I broke my leg and I'm like, oh my God. So now I'm stuck home. I can't go anywhere. You know what I mean? I missed two weddings um, because I literally couldn't, like literally couldn't. But then beyond that, I I did all the rest of my weddings. Um, It was only like, you know, around surgery and all that. Like, but um, I was sitting at home. I was stuck at home because this fucking broken leg. Number one. Okay. The first thing, the blessing that came out of it is I'm having a son in a couple of weeks, and that's because Let's I had a kid go, bro. I had a I had a broken leg, and we can only do on top. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Gravity. God. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, did wait? Did Nick just say, "Do you know what I mean?" As though we didn't know what he meant. Ladies and gentlemen, the tincture just kicked in a little bit. <laughs> that's probably. That's probably why. I mean, literally, I I, I made I made like my little boy with a broken leg. Number one. But, <laughs> Number two, I'm stuck at home with nothing but my thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, all right, I got to fucking, there's nothing else I can do. I got to grind this shit out. And I didn't have a lot of, like, you know, uh, like, content. So, like, I started booking all these fucking guests on my show, you know what I mean, to, like, fill up, like, you know, the show space because, like, I didn't have a lot to talk about, Uh, especially because it was, like, off season two, but, you know, I had a broken leg and everything else. So, like, I booked all these fucking guests, and, you know, I, then I finally had Chris Vio on my podcast and he's the one that fucking kind of like opened it up to me because like we got into talking about like TikTok and all that. And like, I was thinking like, I, and while I had a broken leg, I was thinking, 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 what can I do for content? And I thought I was like, you know, it would be pretty cool to like start filming myself live at weddings. Nobody's done that. I'm the first. I'm going to fuck, fuck you. If you yeah. like, like find someone who did it before me. Cause I, I haven't found him yet. I'm the first one to film a live mix at a wedding and post it somewhere. Like nobody films like live shit at a wedding. Like you know what I mean? They always put overdub something or whatever, right. especially in like the or it's TikTok just the crowd. format. Correct. Right. So I'm like, well, I could like film my routines, you know, and show the crowd reaction, all that. Like that could be cool. But I'm like, but then everyone's gonna steal my routines, right? And and it's true. Like everyone does steal your routines. Like it's right. a fucking fact. So I'm like, right. I don't want to do that. And then somehow it came up in the Chris. I still have to watch it back. I forget the exact like context like of it. Like I got to watch it back. It's obviously on the internet. But like I'm I'm interviewing Chris Via, and like that comes up, and I'm like, yeah, I was thinking about doing this, 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 but like I don't know. I don't want people to bite my shit. And Chris Via is like, nah, dog. Like like Jazz. I think he said Jazzy Jeff told me he's like, listen, you know, you got to die empty. Like as an artist, you want to die empty. You want to put all your shit out there. Like you you never want to hold anything in as an artist it's because deep. then you die and then it dies with you. Like, you know, like you, all your artistic shit you want to put out there in the world and that's your legacy. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like we, we finished the call and I'm like, damn, that's actually, he's kind of fucking right. Maybe I should fucking post some shit. And then, um, so the weekend before I interviewed Chris Via, I happened to, to film my entire wedding because, um, and shouts out to fucking Styles Davis, Asher, Asher asked me from DJ city asked me to do a vlog for DJ City's YouTube. He was like, yo, can you do a vlog for the YouTube? Just film your whole fucking wedding. And we're going to do, because we're trying to do like wedding DJ content for uh, DJ City. So like, you know, we'll have a vlog for you from that wedding. So I had a wedding, you know, and I cherry picked, right? Like, you know, I had like 200 people at this wedding. So it should be a banger, da, da, da. So, and I was like, literally had a broken leg at the time. And, um, and then we, we filmed that whole wedding. And it's funny. So we filmed the whole wedding, you know, and I was working with Paul. Shout out to Paul Knox. Right. He was my MC because like I felt weird, uh, you know, like the whole time I had a broken leg. If I was on the scooter, I brought an extra MC with me because I felt weird MCing with the fucking scooter. So I was like, oh, I would someone else. die. I would. I, yeah, I felt die. stupid. I'd throw a stick in front of you. Like, yeah. <laughs> Nick, I would have paid you extra to literally do that. 
if I were getting yeah, married. literally. So exactly. <laughs> The, 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 see how easy like the whole bro, show could go I, off rails so like bro, that's why i don't want to do it i would literally so, play like when you roll it out i would play like a squeaky wheel sound effects as you're like you came out on the answer yeah jokes galore so i was self-conscious about it so i bring paul right paul was the mc um and i i let him know like we're filming for dj city tonight i'm going to film this whole wedding i i recorded the whole set right everything i had a camera set up and what's really crazy is like santi uh, you know, one of my best friends and like, you know, my, my main assistant and everything like Santi, um, insisted on using his G seven X for a second, um, uh, a second, uh, like a second angle, right? Like a yeah, he has, or like a, yeah. yeah. He has like a little, he, he has this exact like G seven X, right? Like the little point and shoot camera. Right. Yeah. And he's like, listen, man, I'll bring my G seven X and I'll get a second angle for you. And I swear to God, when he said it to me in the back of my head, I'm like, that's like, I don't know. I'm really fucking, I, mean, I get it. I'm, like, this, this. Cause I'm <laughs> like, thinking like, well, we're, cause I have my DSLR and all that. And I'm like, well, it's right. not going to be, and he has a DSLR, but he uses it for pictures. And he's like, well, I'll use this for second angle. I'm like, it's not going to be as good quality. I don't think my head. I'm like, but you know what? But yeah, that's cool. Santi. Yeah, do that. Thanks, man. Right. I just, I blew it off. I almost told him not to do it. I almost thought that like, ah, it's, it's not needed. It's not necessary. Whatever. But I'm like, whatever, Santi, do it. And sure enough. He's the one that got my viral video. He fucking filmed with G7X and he got the one girl who reacted to my party in the USA fucking routine and the rest is history. And so like I used his G7X footage. It was literally shot. It was shot in landscape. So like it was shot this way and I zoomed, zoomed it in and made it like vertical for the fucking thing. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't even good quality or nothing. And uh, but I overdubbed the audio, obviously, because I recorded the audio and that's what I decided. to. Um, so the first the first TikTok I made, I released was um, I think I was going to teach me how to Dougie. No, I was going. We will rock you in to teach me how to Dougie. Right. So I posted that, I think. And it did like decent. And I was like, all right, cool, cool. And then I did then the, the second TikTok I posted of live party in the USA or whatever, like the routine I do um, going from uh, party in the USA to Britney Spears. Um, 34 million views i think on tiktok and 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 that that's and that went viral and i never forget i posted it and by the end of the day it hit a million views i never had a video hit a million views in my life obviously <laughs> and like i poured a drink me and Steph were freaking out i'm like oh my god no fucking way and then and then that's when i and then obviously i'm like all right well and then it blew up in the next days and i'm like okay well holy fuck this concept that i thought about like this live shit it fucking it's works working. Right. Like I got to keep this shit pushing. And then I just fucking hammered the fuck out of it. And I, I made a commitment. I, I, I posted a TikTok and a reel every single day, I think for like 60 days straight. And, uh, and, uh, you know, just hammered it, hammered it, hammered it. And that's when, you know, that's kind of every, how everything blew up. But like the moral of the story is, you know, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done any of this without a broken leg, without talking to Chris Villa, Without fucking, you know what I mean? Like without like, DJ I, City, without like Santi. without DJ City, without Santi fucking recording that angle, without Asher, like Styles Davis, like asking me to do the fucking thing for DJ City in general, I would never got that reaction. You know, your first the viral video is luck. You know, like it's got to be the right video, and you got to post at the right time, and the right people see it. Like it really is luck. Like it's got to be a great video. Don't get me wrong, but there's plenty of great videos that don't go viral. You know, you got to get that one lucky thing. And then when you get the lucky thing, then you got to hammer it and like keep, you know, and, and then, and then blow and blow it up after that. And like, that was my lucky break. And, uh, you know, it's, it's insane how life works out, man. Like it just, you know, the broken leg fucking changed my entire life. Like when I say I am in a completely different situation, uh, from how long ago was it? Were we October 19th? So it was nine months ago. Yeah. Well, it would be nine months because, you know, an absolute 180 situation in my life. Like unbelievable. How'd you, how'd you feel that Missy, uh, sliding in your, in your comments and saying hello. So Missy never, uh, yeah. And so I, try, I did try, by the way, I did try. I promise we reached out to people. Oh, There's yeah, only what so much do? I can do, you Dude, know, like Dude, I don't she know did her. enough, bro. Missy fucking first Missy. Missy was crazy. So like I post that video. First Missy comments on TikToks like, yo, this motherfucker's killing it. And I'm right. like, so I pinned her comment, right? And I'm like, wow, Missy Elliott commented on my video. That right. was cool. The following day, she tweets my video, right? On Twitter. I don't even have a Twitter, by the way. That's where so I like, saw it. Yeah. So then she tweets my video on Twitter like, yo, this motherfucker's killing it. I'm like, holy mm -hmm. shit. She tweeted me. The next day, 
she posted on Instagram. I'm like, oh, what fuck, the fuck? It was like, dude. it was like, it was like one a day. It wasn't all at once. Like it was <laughs> right. insane. Like it's like it was like you were still thinking about it the next day. Like I don't right. understand why. I, the next day she posts on fucking Instagram. My Instagram gets like a thousand followers like this. Right. It's like fucking nuts. Instagram was nuts too, cause like, so. Like I had the viral video on TikTok and then I started blowing up on TikTok and then I was like doing my thing on TikTok and TikTok was rolling, right? Every video I posted, you know, I'm I'm in the six digits. Right. Life is great. Uh Instagram, you know, I'm posting videos and I got you know, I've I've had videos, you know, a hundred thousand ish on Instagram, right? Which is great, right? And, and you know, and then the other ones, you know, twenty, ten thousand, whatever, you know, doing my thing. Sure. And eventually I kinda like you know, stop posting on Instagram, you know, like, like not posting, like I stopped posting every video that I post on TikTok on Instagram because I was kind of like thinking like Instagram has all my DJ followers. And like, you know, if it's not like the greatest idea of all time, like I don't want to post on Instagram, you know, if it's just a blend or something like, I, you know, I feel like I'm going to get flamed on Instagram for it. Cause like, it's just a blend. It's not like anything super creative. So like everyone's going to judge me. So like, you know, I have that like insecurity. Right. But then one day I'm like, who gives a fuck? Let me just yeah. post like, this is just a good video. Like, it's just a good video. Right. And, and then, and then, and then I, then I stopped, like, uh, then I started posting on Instagram again when I was posting on TikTok, like at the same time. And then I had a, a viral video on Instagram, get like almost 10 million views. And it was just a blend. It was literally just me like beat mixing from one song to another. Nothing special. That was it. And, I, and that that opened up my eyes. I was like, so the simplicity of it. Regular people will fuck with just like a great mix. Yeah. So I don't have to overthink this. So then I started hammering Instagram. And then later on. So we're talking like June, July. That's when I was able to actually like really blow up on Instagram. Like after I blew up on on TikTok because like I realized the niche on Instagram and then and then yeah like it's I don't know, it's all fucking nuts I can't believe all that went <laughs> I still can't believe it bro Do if you, you think you can't believe it so you hit one hundred thousand followers on July first right Is that when it was that's the, I I literally just looked back through our text because I texted you and I said one hundred k who the fuck are you you motherfucker right. Uh, so hang on. So, uh, let me look you up real quick. Let me see where you're at right now. Nick, DJ Nick Spinelli is now at 204,000 followers. So you've gained 104,000 followers. Oops. Oops. Don't do that. Hold on one second. I, Radio thought, silence. It's cool. This is liked... the beauty of this is, is, is I yeah. can cut this whole thing, but I'm totally fucking not gonna <laughs> no, please add his just black screen right now. <laughs> Tell me you forgot to plug your fucking dummy battery in. Oh, no, I literally, is? I literally pulled out my dummy battery by accident. Oh well. Can you hear me no, now? You don't pull out. So. You can hear me, right? We could hear you the whole time. Yeah, we. Yeah, we uh, can yeah. see you. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I pulled out by accident. Right. Yeah. So, so July first was a hundred. So then, July first, you hit a hundred thousand followers. October. You're now at two hundred and four thousand followers. On July first, I also hit. 2.5 thousand followers and i was July, fucking stoked august september so, so what is that like twenty five thousand followers a month or something like that yeah, yeah. so you dude. doubled since july 1st and imagine it's imagine it's november 1st right so you go from 7 1 to 11 1 that's four months you gained over twenty five thousand followers a month I've sorry guys i only have five thousand i've gained i've gained followers. 200 followers yeah Actually, lost. Time. I lost followers last month, Nick, by posting reels of my weddings. I'm losing followers. So no, no, no you're not losing followers, Shorty. You are gaining, uh, like a true following. You are you're dumping the 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 fucking fat. like you're trimming the fat. That's what, how you need to look well, it's at. It's because I'm not. They're not seeing the radio shit anymore. That's all they followed me for, right? So like now that exactly. I'm not, like, yeah. So know. then then you got to trim trim that fat. Then yeah. You so gotta now keep that they're not the seeing that, they're like, well, what, why am I? Why, why do I care? You know, yeah, which you I pivot, which when you pivot I, on what you do, you got to trim that fat. Yeah. yeah. Which I mean, for me, like I've never been a numbers like I, I just don't care. Like I don't care. Like if I had no 500 point. followers, whatever. Right. Like, yeah, I, I'm blessed to the, the people that follow me. Like, cool. Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. You know, for me, it's a little different. I don't really I don't you know, I don't I, like I, I don't know. 
like I just kind of joke around like if it matters to your audience then it matters and that's sort of what what Nick was talking about is like if, right. if, if if you if your entire audience is DJs then you know they they won't care but if part of your audience is wedding couples then they they care a whole lot more about like a simple blend because to them it's fucking mind blowing well, I think for you know? Nick, you know, for for you, like you, yes, you can scratch. I wish, I wish I knew how to scratch. I, I don't. I just don't. And Kevin has tried to teach me. It's terrible. Don't. Like, I've it's tried. a whole nother show. Um, and so you're very good at what you do. Like I love the um, this is how we do it into oh, fuck and what fresh am I prints. Thinking? Fresh prints. And you yeah, do that like this is scratch out of it, and like you make it seem so simple. And I'm just like I looked down at my turntables and i'm like uh like, and i'm just like I, I can't but you know i think all three of us can agree like you know we want everything to be perfect and we want to like scratch and we do all these great things but like at the end of the day the average person if they hear a great mix and it sounds great to their ear i think that's really all they're like hoping for is that it's not a train wreck it sounds really good and oh i would want that at my wedding right yeah, but the, the but 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 the main thing is isn't the mix, man. Like like well, the mix is like part of it, but like I think it's your personality as well. It's you as no, well. It's not. What, no, it's not. So what what it is? You the the niche I found is that is weddings, okay. weddings. Everybody on earth has been to a wedding, has had a wedding, has been involved in a wedding, knows right. about weddings, right? No matter what your culture is, what country you're from, like that's one the one universal thing. Everybody gets married, right? I mean, I guess there's probably a country somewhere that doesn't believe in marriage, but like generally speaking, everybody gets married or like or at least knows wedding. what weddings are and gives a shit about weddings, right? From grandmas to like kids, right? right. So the wedding content, the 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 point of view type wedding content, like is gold because there's it just anybody can identify with it, you know, and I think that's what helped me. Like regular people, like can watch me like mix at a wedding, but like they're not just watching me mix. Like maybe like my mix was cool and that was what's up, but like it's also like wow, like look what the bride's doing, look what these people in the crowd are doing, like look at this setup, look at like the venue, what's the venue look like? You know what I mean? There's so many aspects to like that would make you rewatch the video. And I think right. that's the major key, the live aspect of the wedding. And that's why, like, I'm able to – that's truly why I think I'm able to have so much more views on average than, like, any of the guys that just make – a reg like, that just, like, do the DJ routines, like, at their house or whatever. You know what I mean? Where they're like, sure. they're like hey, I'm going to mix these two songs together. You know, I'm chilling like I'm in my studio or whatever, the same background, whatever. Like, that, 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 that's my biggest advantage. Like, my shit is live. Like, you get to see the live wedding thing. You get to see, well, for you me, know, um, and like every it, venue's different, so I always have a different background. You know what I mean? Yeah. For me, like, watching your videos, like, I'll go to the comments, and there will be people that will say, oh, my God, the girl in the red dress. Or the, you know, like, so now I'm like, well, wait a sec. Like, I'm going back, and I'm hitting play again, and I'm looking for the girl in the red dress. Or yep. I'm looking for the, like, there's that's so a many replay. Instantly. Yeah, I'm looking for so many. Com I'm looking for the comments to see what people are saying, and then go back and rewatching it. Uh, yeah. And I, yep. I mean, I agree. Well, I think exactly. I, I think, yeah. I think you're so right. I was, guys. Yeah, so here's the deal. I uh, I just had. I thought I had an idea, and uh, I, I'm I'm bringing the podcast back in right now. Um, and I fucking forgot. No, not an idea. You so, had a story. An idea. I had a story. What the fuck, you mean an idea about being at the Park Savoy in New Jersey. Yeah. And then I just fucking go blank, and I'm fucking, like, hitting my desk right now because I can't fucking think of it. You see what I got to deal with, Nick? You see this? I don't know. I, I, I just hear a bunch of people turning off the podcast right now. That's what oh, I Oh, they turn off an hour. And, just, I'm, just, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Just like, we Yeah, go. you've been. No, bro, you got so many fucking dick squeezes that they're going to stay yeah. here through this shit, too. They're going to listen to me. Or I'll stop. Oh, you. St so, hang on. This is, this is a point that I, I do have to make. What? Is that you have... You've gone from fucking like absolute super high and it's like humility has just consumed you every single day, dude. Like I've never seen you as such a humble guy. And well, what do you want me to be like? No, 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 no. I'm not saying I, what I want you to be like. I'm saying what, 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 what we were, what we were in college. Nick, could you be an asshole for the next like just 20 minutes of the show until we're done? Can you just be a fucking jerk? No, I can't. can't. Listen, you know what happened, I Kevin? I reached, I reached my thirties, bro. I'm in my 30s. I'm, I'm just chilling. Jesus. I'm we just chilling, chilling bro. Jesus, what the fuck? 
That's just uh, well, you're still in man. your thirties, Shorty. I'm Shut the here. fuck up. No, what, you're not. You're thirty seven. No, I'm thirty seven. I'll be thirty eight. He's thirty seven, uh, Nick. Dude, Nick, I'll uh. be thirty eight on your favorite day of the year. What four twenty? Yep. Nice. So, um, yeah, 38. I'm going to be 34. Yeah, so we're only four years apart. Yeah, it just feels like an eternity. I feel old. You know? No, bro. Same age, Every day is just another day, bro. What's up? Okay, so a couple weeks from now, you're going to be a dad. Yeah. Yes. Nick. Nick, are we, are we Nick Jr. Is that uh, like I know you guys talked about on the hot cues, but uh, uh, Lil yeah. Nicky. We're, let's, can we call him Lil Nicky? Because Lil Nicky, he's just falling of fucking Satan. Yeah. Lil How? Nicky. I have like so I don't have kids. I just have a dog. So I, yep. I'm not I'm not married. I don't have a girlfriend. What what's going through your mind? You better be a dad. Wait, a hang on. Can we can we please mention Booya? Booya, wifey. Like, oh yeah, she's yeah. the one actually doing all the work right now. Yeah. Let's be Shouts honest. Shouts to Steph. <laughs> like, Shouts to Steph. Shouts to Steph, man. Fucking a. Trooper. You guys have been together for like 15 fucking years now. Yeah, it's been forever, man. Dude, <laughs> it's crazy. How'd you two it's meet? My, it's my ride or die. College. Valley. Okay. Oh, yeah. so wait, so Kevin knew you're like, you guys yeah. have all known each other this long? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Hell yeah. yeah. It really has it been is. 15 years. That's a fucking legend. Yeah, yeah. Same same girl. She's been forever. through more ringers than yeah, all, all of, of us it. combined. She's seen everything. She's seen me go broke 30,000 times. It's not even funny. She stayed around. Bro, it's insane. She's seen the worst fuck up I've ever done at a wedding. Like the the story I told on my uh, show where I played the metal song uh, at the during the first dance. Dude, wait, whoa, what? She was there for that. Dude, the fucking iPhone. She was fucking there for that. <laughs> what song? Um, I played. Uh, so uh, the worst fuck up I ever did at a wedding. I uh, I uh, so I had two laptops and. Um, they wanted a Disney song for their intro song. So like I downloaded it on one laptop, but like I didn't think to transfer it to the other laptop, right? Like my main DJing laptop. So I played their Disney intro song on a separate laptop on like an eighth inch cord. And then like my main laptop had everything else. Cause like I already had that on my hard drive. So like I played their intro song, they come out, right? The new Mr. And Mrs. Whatever. Right. And they come out and I left that laptop playing. And then like I fucking, um, uh, I fucking, brought up the first dance on my main laptop. I played the first dance song. And then as the first dance was playing, the next song on my iTunes played on the other laptop. And that was the plot in you. It's called the father seed. And it was the worst possible song to ever play. In a wedding. It's like unfucking believable how bad this song was the song. So I, I like metal. I like, I like like screamo metal core, like when I work out and stuff. So I listen to that shit. Five finger death punch stuff like that. No, way harder than that. Oh, way so harder. harder. Five finger death punch is like bitch shit. Like I'm talking yeah. like, fucking up. like crazy like, shit, like right? Triple bass pedal. Yes. Like, like insane, so fucking right? Hard. Breakdowns. Dug on, dug on, dug on. Like the I love that shit, right? Oh. So the plot in you, the father seed, if you listen to it, the songs on iTunes, obviously you look it up, but like, if you listen to it, it starts out with the phone ringing. And it's like, hello. Hello. And then it's a girl in the other line. She's like, I'm pregnant. And then the whole song starts and it'll break down. And the whole song starts. No. Dogon. 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 And it's like, that's literally playing at full blast, uh, <laughs> like on my JBL Eon 15 inch speed, like the la- like, cause it took me like at least 15 seconds to figure out where it was coming from. I was like, why is this playing? I don't know where it's come from. And then I figure out it's channel three and I finally turn it down and then they continue their first dance to Jason Mraz or whatever. <laughs> right. And I want to fucking die. Right. I want to die. And and luckily, uh, the couple, luckily, like the bride and groom were cool, and they were like, "No, it's so cool. It's it's all it's all good. We thought it was funny." I'm like, "What? <laughs> any what? other any what? other couple would have? Oh my god! <laughs> Literally. I mean, keep in mind, like this this wedding, I probably charged four or five hundred bucks. You know, like it wasn't like it it was like it, it was years, somebody years, I went to school ago. with at LVC. Yeah, yeah. This was like twenty. Oh my god, was it? Wait, was it an LVC couple? <laughs> Dude. Yeah, 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 it was LVC. Well, like, but it was older. Um, her name was Kelly. She was, um, she was like 
a, a she was like in her thirties, oh, and and then she was in one of my business classes though. Like she like she went ah. to obviously. So that's how I knew her. So it was like an older, but like yeah yeah, it was like probably twenty twelve when I did the <sighs> wedding, twenty thirteen at the latest. Jeez. It was just the worst fuck up. And keep in mind, like at that point, like I was already almost 10 years in, like, you know what I mean? Like it was just, it was just like a complete fucking misstep on my part. Like, and like, I was just lazy the way I did things. Cause I did like 10, 15 weddings a year, you know, yeah. was, and that, but that was, was a big wake up call for me or not wife, but what it was Stephanie's, what did she so, say yes. to you after? Like, I mean, she didn't say much cause we just started dating, but like, um, you know, all that talk about wanting to be a DJ for a living <laughs> didn't sound too good after that. Was, was and, uh, she, was she like your assistant or was she, yeah, just she hanging? was my assistant that wedding. Yeah. Okay, I had her come playing, hang out. She was, well, no, she didn't like, yeah. Like she was my assistant. So like, oh yeah, she was I, just slopping gear. Yeah. Like she yeah. just kind of helped me out. You know what I mean? Like, like, cause I've assisted for you and I, I think I fucked up. We did like a fucking fucking yeah, yeah. 12-year-old birthday party or something like that. <laughs> and I hit Q instead of play because I was just there to take fucking photos. Yeah, like honest. stuff like that. Like, like like back then, I would just always, like, I was trained as an assistant. So, like, if I had a, a party, I felt like, all right, well, I always have to bring, like, someone with me to help out or whatever, right. you know? And then, so I would always just bring random people. Like, I brought you, Kevin. I brought, like, Josh Light, if you remember Josh yeah. Light. I, 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 and, you know, I brought Steph that one wedding. I think that's the one wedding Steph ever went to. And, uh, yeah, so she saw, like, my biggest epic fuck-up and still didn't dump me. So, there you go. More power to Bro, it. I I just been, always loved you been guys. Together fucking ever, man. That's Literally insane. for fucking ever. Yeah. So, yeah. Dad Nick, like, what what are the emotions running through your head? Like, what's going on? You about to have a, you about to have a child in your fear, hands. fear, excitement, uh, all of it, man. I'm just excited. I, I, you know, I, you know, I'm I'm scared. I think you know because like we we don't know what we're doing, but like I guess all new parents don't know what the fuck they're doing. So you know. We just got to figure it out. It's like a new challenge. I, I think throughout this entire pregnancy, like, you know, you learn a lot. Like, we never really wanted kids. So, you know, I never, like, paid attention to this aspect of life. And there's, like, just so many things. Like, I had no idea how it worked. And, like, I'm learning now. So, it's just, like, this entire thing has been, like, an incredible learning experience. Like, it's unbelievable. And then, you know, being a dad in general, I'm just, I'm pumped, man. Like, I'm pumped to just, like, kind of you know, like have fun, you know, like I'm pumped to build Legos with him. I'm pumped to like, you know, teach him shit, you know, download all my opinions in his head. And, you know, <laughs> you fucking stop, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna start that on day you one, fucking... like the very first day. <laughs> I, I, I'm, just pumped, I'm just pumped to have a little, what's man, the man. first song? What's the first song you want little Nikki to hear? I don't know about first song, but, um, but I, I'm going to introduce him. Like I'm going to show him, you know, everything like across the board. Like I want him to know James Brown. I want him to know uh, the Beatles. I want him to know Elvis. I want him to know like bad company and like classic rock. And then like, I want to show him the 80, I want to show him everything. And I want him to like, you know, kind of decide like what he likes or whatever, but I want to, you know, really open his mind to like all like the classics and then like slowly work him up to like the newer stuff. Like he's, he's going to be well-versed in music and, and I'm just excited to see what, uh, you know what he's gonna like like is he is he gonna be a sports guy is he gonna be like a music guy is he gonna be like like what's he gonna be into like, imagine you know? little nicky's a cowboys fan you know no he, that, that's impossible <laughs> i will brainwash him to be <laughs> just imagine. They, no no i will literally brainwash him <laughs> bro, he can dude. watch this later in life like i will bro. brainwash him be eagles fan just like i was brainwashed it is what it is he's gonna be an eagles fan there's no option he gets kicked out of the fucking house if he's a cowboys <laughs> fan like there's just, there's there's levels here there's bro, lines that, that yeah. can't be that's a line that cannot be crossed there's no way he could be any other fan other than an eagles fan like there, I, there's no he's a there's Giants rules fan. in this house i just there's I, rules in this house i no, just no, i just see not, not this I see Nate Nelson f just sending Cowboys merch to your house. And I see myself just throwing it in the trash. <laughs> yeah. Nate Nelson As it comes instantly. In. Don't even just open literally it. Just, just it dropping it in the fucking trash. Throw yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> right in the, the fire. Filming it. filming it. Straight filming away. It. And filming it. Straight to jail. Yeah, no, no. That, that's a guarantee. Let, let's be honest. Like, you know, we're, like I can influence him. So, like, I will influence him to be a Philly sports fan. 
outside of that, I want him to make his own decisions, and I can't wait to see what he makes. Philadelphia is having a good, a, a good sports a uh, great. year right now. We got the Phillies. Listen, like I'm, Phillies I'm, lost tonight, but we have three home games coming up. Like we yeah. have a really good shot of going to the World Series, and uh, the Eagles being undefeated. Uh, we are by far the best team in the league right now. I mean, barring any injuries or anything like that, like we're the we're a very complete team, and it's un- fucking believable. So, I'm well, if you think excited. about it, Sunday. If if the 76ers had a won, it would have been the 76ers, the Flyers, the Phillies, and the Eagles all would have won for Philadelphia. So yep. yeah. uh, obviously I'm rooting for my Phillies here. I've got my hoodie on. I was, a little, I was please don't please don't DM me and tell me that I'm dumb. I already know I am. But I was running some errands tonight and I literally had like my phone on the little phone thing in my car just watching the game as i'm like driving down the road like i'm kind of like what i know i get I it please don't dm me that, please right? don't fucking you know well because you, you don't have a philly radio there like i have fm radio so yeah. i can like listen to the game but yeah i feel you it's yeah, vip yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, no. People, so people I are it. over people using their phones while they're driving now right I, I just yeah, yeah no i know i'm gonna now. get the message like, you right? may die I know. Well, Nick and I have this one friend that used to like text us if we were taking photos or videos while we were driving. Yo, he called my boss one time. What? Yeah, he literally called Jason Clock one time, and he like he was like, "How would you feel if your fucking wedding DJ was blah, 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 fucking keyboard warrior?" I he love gets the guy. So butthurt. I love him. He, he runs a he bike means, shop right now, but he, he, he means he, super well. He means exactly. He means really well, but like it's yeah. It's Bro, you're not my dad. Right? You're six years older than me. Yeah. I love you, Nate. Love you, Baker. But yeah. not Nate Nelson. Yeah. Not Nate Nelson. No, no, no. no, no By the no, way, Nick, no. I saw you uh, at AC or in AC. I felt awkward, like just wanting to like. Uh, oh, in the was, elevator, like, you, you fucking yeah, weirdo! <laughs> you, yo, well, no, I told you not to bring I this told, up, dude. It's fine. I'm just gonna bring it up anyway. Like I told Kevin, I was like, dude, there's so many people that just bum rush you, right? And I don't want to be that dude, like. I said, hey, what's up? There's also, bro, do you remember the elevator door open? And there's 7 million people around you, and then there's Nick in the middle. And I almost was like, I'll just take the other one or the stairs because it was already packed. And you were like, nah, yeah, bro. And you on. were like, uh, and I was like, I was like, come on, you coming on? And you were like, all right. And then you came on and you put your yeah. I was like, I'm not, you know, not. Well, yeah, and you were like, yo, your fucking backpack. I mean, my backpack was going to get stuck in the fucking door. I just don't want to, I see, like, I you literally get you off the done. elevator and it's like fucking, you know, uh, 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 Kanye West, you know, like people were, you know. Yeah, but only in that situation. Like, it's just because it's a fucking DJ expo. Otherwise, like, I know. I just don't want to be like, that. I'm just, I'm just a fucking. Bro, Nick doesn't want to be that guy ass. at the expo. Yeah, I'm not. I'm no just saying, I don't want to be the guy that's know? like, you know, like you're walking down the hall and I ha- I'm uh, holding on to your leg, you know, like I just, I don't, don't want to be that guy. I said, what's up? Yo, Leave you alone. One of my no, favorite cool. things to do to Nick is to just throw someone in his fucking court. Like, just be like, oh, you're a random guy? Yo, there's Nick Spinelli. Go ahead. <laughs> Yo, you know who was fucking, like, I mean, he, he, he was so excited to meet you. He talked about it for, like, five years afterwards. Or not five years, oh. but, like, uh, Tony Pree's dad. Oh, Dude, yeah. Literally, yeah, though. Yeah, Tony yeah, Pree's dad. dad. But that's different, man. No, that's but like Tony Pree's fucking... dad's cool as fuck. Like, I cool, I want to hang out with Tony Pree's dad. He's cool people. Like, Long Island yeah. motherfucker. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Mm. He's got, he's that got accent the accent everything. to prove it. Yep. Jesus. You motherfucker. Cool. Are motherfucker. we doing dad jokes or what are we doing here, Kevin? Um, I don't know. Nick, you got a dad joke? You're about to be I mean, a you're dad. You're about to be a dad. Have you been practicing? I don't. I, I'll be honest. I don't have any. I just. I was like, right. yo, Nick's. I mean, I yeah. I, I don't. I don't tell jokes like in that premise. Like you know the, the yeah. that premise of joke. Like I don't. Yeah, tell we're jokes reactive. Like premise. Reactive I, shit. Yeah, right? I just. Yeah, I just tell reactive jokes. I'm just a. You yeah. Know, whatever. I got. You've plenty been funny of- enough. I think. I think this might be like the episode where we fully retired dad jokes, man. Jordy. Oh yeah. Think. We're done. Is that right? I wow. just like Damn. it. I just, well, well, Nick texted me earlier and he was like, are there any segments that I have to worry about or like, you know, like be prepared for it? I'm just kind of like, no, well, I cause like I went on that hot cues podcast and these motherfuckers yeah. oh, out of nowhere, they don't this. tell me nothing. Right. I just I hop on the podcast. Right. And we're doing it and everything's great. And they're like, hot potato. and then, and then out of nowhere, Nate's like, all right, so we're going to do a pot. We're going to do this segment <laughs> called we're going to go on time. Twitch and, and we're, we're no, going to. Oh, no, not Twitch. Tinder. Tinder. Yeah. We're going to go on Tinder and we're going to rate these bitches. And I'm like, <laughs> well, fuck, I ain't rating bitches. We're going to what? Yeah. Like we're going to bring up. We're going to we're going to bring this girl up and we're going to like 
see if she's a good fit for Tony and like talk about like how she looks. I'm like, yeah, they're not doing that anymore. They're, they're they're actually, I think they yeah, because afterwards I was like, all right, first of all, you should cut the whole thing because that was stupid yeah. and I was awkward the whole thing because like I think that shit was stupid. Second of all, it's a fucking stupid idea. He's like, well, we might do it with like, um, you know, Female. I might just bring like my wife on and have her like rate for oh, I'm like, I Jen guess that would work, but that's still out. fucking stupid. So that's why. That, so that's that was the PTSD I had that triggered me to ask yeah. you. Whether or not, not there was sure, any man. some fucking segments I need to know about. Yeah, we don't, we don't have any tender time. I did tell Nate I was like, you know, if you don't do something like it, you like don't show the girl on the on the screen, but you know, just tell Tony what to message the girl. Like you have to type what I'm telling you, right? Yeah, like, like that would be funny. Line. Line. And then right? and then I can make up funny open line stuff like that. Yeah, that would be yeah. funny. Yeah, right. that'd be so, something you'd be or, or cater it to the guest. For that week, yeah. Which is, if they're good at spitting game, then by all means, go for it. But then yeah. that also implies that you're only having male guests. Yeah, you know, all, all around, it's just like I'm going to cut situation. this whole fucking part. I'm going to no, cut no, this whole no, fucking no. part. No, we, yeah. we can't we talk, talk so much on our buddy's doing? podcast. No, we're not talking I mean, listen, shit about it. He, Nick, Nick told him to their like face. Shit. I, I mean, like I did, but shit. like, but, but yeah. watch, but yeah, but but watch it back and whatever you want to cut, you know. But mean, they also guys. haven't released an episode in like a whole month, so. All right, all right, and now you have what, to cut that, it. <laughs> and that's what, that's what's a shame. Just bleep that part. Uh, that's well, I, I gotta get, I gotta get a little heartfelt for a moment, bro, because I've known you since I was fucking seventeen years old, man. Like, thank you, first off, for coming on our podcast. Oh my pleasure. Thank you for literally making me a DJ. Because if it wasn't for you <laughs> sure. wanting to buy those fucking turntables, then I wouldn't be doing this shit. Wait, what turntables? What are you talking about? You mean you mean you, the, you mean the SX? Uh, no, you you needed cash to buy those fucking turntables. Not for the turntables, for the DJ for the SX? SX when the SX came out. Kevin, Just the original SX? Yes, Kevin. So, all right, let me paint the picture for you. You you, okay. you, you don't remember correctly. So, the turntables, Clearly. those turntables I got were given yeah. to me by uh, another DJ that That's came right. up to me when I was at Sawyer's. And he was like, yo, man, like, you should try turntables. I got a set I'll give to you. And he literally gave me a set of techniques, but they didn't work. And I remember, and then and then <sighs> I didn't know them. any, and I'm so mad at myself. I wish I would have kept them because, like, now I know how to, like, fucking make them work. But like back in the day, I didn't know anything about turntables, and like yeah. so they just sat there. I literally like, like they just literally just sat there. I brought them to Jersey with me, and then I ended up giving them to Seth. And Seth was like, "Well, I don't know what to do with them." And then he sold them, and then that was it. Like I sold them to Seth for like two hundred bucks, and then like that was it. But 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 that but no. So what I I had a um I had a Newmark NS six right. That's what I, I was DJing with. And the, the 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 SX, the the fucking Pioneer SX, the original, the OG SX, like didn't yeah. even have color pads yet came out, right? When yeah. that shit came out, I fucking wanted that shit in the worst way because I wanted to switch to Serato and I wanted to have those pads and all that. And um, I, I don't remember like how it even fucking came up or whatever, but you fronted me $1,000 to buy um, – Seth's SX. It was a used from Seth. It was a used SX with the case, and you fronted me a thousand dollars to buy that so I can have it. And then I I, I borrowed the thousand dollars from you. I bought that, and then I paid you off. And that was like my first like real mixer. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna, um, I, so I'm going to correct you there because you paid me money. You didn't pay. We, the total was a thousand dollars, but you it was a thousand right? Me your NS six. Oh, I gave you an, yeah, that's right. I gave you. Do you still have that? So I was like, you, yeah, oh, yes. You yeah, keep everything. You were a fucking pack rat. That's unbelievable. I but I'm glad you still have that. Because I'm glad you I still knew have you were, that. Because I knew you were going to be fucking famous, bro. Because Can you sign I've it, been Nick? Biggest bug in. Listen, Can you bro, get a silver, a silver sharpie and sign it. All the guys that I talk about being your dick squeeze, I'm fucking two handing you. Like since 20, 2007. like. So I do still and you, have it, Nick. And you see case. why I just said that's hey to you in the elevator and kept it. pushing. <laughs> see, <laughs> no, but that's crazy. You still have that. That's fucking sick, Of course, sick, dude. Bro. I would never I'll get buy, rid of that, I'll, man. I'll, I'll, I'll probably buy that back from you one day <laughs> for no, two thousand dollars. Going in my Nick Spinelli museum. Oh, no, <laughs> hang on, hang on. You ready? Bang. Boom. Oh, I need that back. 
Yeah, yeah I bet you do. I bet you do. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what is that's it? My, that's my football trophy from eighth grade. Why yeah, does yeah. why does Kevin it says Nick Spinelli on it? See it? graduate Nick Spinelli two thousand fucking two. Yeah, that's why that's why that's my uh, uh football broken, trophy from eighth grade. Fucking hand right that's here. fucking sick. Yeah, yeah. I need yeah, that. Man. Why do you have it, Kevin? Uh because we live together in fucking seventeen different places. Yeah, right? exactly. Kevin? So like things like yeah. Oh I, okay. Bro, I, okay, okay. Listen, okay, you don't yeah, understand. I've known this guy was gonna be fucking good, was gonna be the best at whatever he did. And I honestly like you know, you talk, uh, Shorty, you asked, like, did have you always had this hustle or whatever? You know, like, I have not. I have, I, I, my parents took care of me for a lot of my life. And then at one day, I was just like, yo, I, I've seen this guy work so fucking hard for everything he earned. I basically told my parents to kick fucking rocks. And I, like, wow. threw my entire family out. And I was just like, I'm going to go so fucking broke that I can't pay attention. That's the fucking Spinelli line that he said to my face. And I was like, I am going to learn how to work fucking hard. And here we are, you know, dope, like man. I. And, and now your dad is the, the, the intro to our, our, our show. Now my dad's the fucking intro. Now my dad is introing me, you know? Yeah. So like, that's the shit that carries so much weight. And that's the, that's the that shit makes you me can learn that, from man. this that's guy. Dope. That's dope. Yeah, man. man. I'm glad. You, 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 uh, you got a lot of stuff ahead, Kevin. You're, you're just getting started, bro. You're just getting, just started, getting started, man. There's started. so there's so much shit ahead. You don't even fucking know. Burn this fucker down, bro. You don't even know. You don't even know. You don't even know. I know. I know. You don't even know. Let's burn this motherfucker down, dude. Right. All day. This was all. Hey, one last question. What's that? And then I'll shut up. What? Were you with Kevin when he fell asleep on the Ben Franklin? Yes, he was. Okay, wasn't he? Well, was I? No, Nick, you don't remember we, we, uh, we said we were going to go to the hose for one drink. Okay. We had to go back to uh, Cherry Hill. Oh. <laughs> and we had like 12, and we woke up late, and we flew back, and we hit traffic on the Ben Franklin, yeah. and we fell asleep. He said he, his car was just sitting in the middle of the fucking Ben Franklin. Nick was driving. Yeah, it was his, yeah. yeah, it was his car. Yeah, I fell asleep. Same too. car I Oh, Nick fell asleep. I, Nick was driving. So I I was like, yo, I'm not fuck there's no fucking way I'm staying. I I have a big thing where I will not sleep while someone else is driving. Okay. And I said, I'm fucking sleeping this ride cuz you said we had to go out to the hose last night. Yeah. Yeah, we went to the hose and then we had and to we drove back inside. and we sold cars wasted. Yeah, we were <laughs> still drunk. We gotta understand this place. The hose is great. Like it's still there. The hose um, you, membership only. At, like at, at that time, it was like uh, okay. I think three fifty or four dollars for a double. But when I say a double, it was like like four or five Strong shots in a drink. It was unbelievable. Like two to three hose drinks and you are fucking wasted, guaranteed. And you can't even taste the alcohol. It's not like it's a strong drink. Like they did it in a way. It was it was like some sorcery. Like they made their drink in a yeah. way, and you would just drink it. It was just like it was a regular cocaine. drink. You got two drinks down. And you're like, oh my god, I'm fucking. And there was a pool table, and we yeah, and fucking pool love table. shooting pool. Like. Yeah, and and they had like the games of chance. You know, like those games oh, of chance where you can like poppers. Yeah, you oh, pop them. Fucking god. Or, the, or the ones you rip. Yeah, like all those. Like it was just the greatest fucking thing. And yeah, and we got fucking blackout drunk, and then like we had to wake up the next day and be in Cherry Hill, and we had to be in Cherry Hill by like eight thirty because the meeting was always at eight thirty. We did these sales at Saturday. Cherry Hill. Saturday, Saturday, meeting. Saturday meeting at 8 30 and like a lot of times the sales would start on Saturday and then go Monday Tuesday Wednesday we would just stay out there and uh so we would have to leave by like you know like 6 30 at the absolute fucking latest to right. get there in time and uh and yeah and uh, yeah we'd be, be crossing that Ben Franklin going into Cherry Hill and like we passed out that one time yeah paying that five dollars easily, easily. Yeah, on the bridge it was fucking fucking it was, it, it was bumper to bumper traffic all fucking day Soul cars drunk. <laughs> Dude, we literally take turns throwing up. Swear to fucking God. Yeah. Bro, if there were cameras Someone around, tell you Bill got, Cop, like if there was like... a reality TV show like <laughs> company that just followed the two of you around. I Listen, mean... they missed out. They missed God, out on the content. It's... it's gone now. It's Pauly D late. and Vinny got nothing on the two of you. There 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 was some shit, man. We we, we had there some, some shit. We had some good times. Fun to Fucking talk selling about. cars was crazy. 
But we make good money. This is how we made our money, man. Like, like we just we, at the at the time we we're just trying to support ourselves, and that was it. And it was the best way we knew how, you know. And uh, this was how I fucking that, literally got and me then, hired. Yeah, and I was like, yo, Kevin's got a camera. Like, he'll fucking film videos. Like, he'll do pictures, everything else, and like he can get the content on social media. That's when social media was super young. And bro, I you mean, that's how I sold videos. it. And then like. Yeah, and then, like, he would make these, like, fucking sick-ass, like, little, uh, like, highlight clips of, like, all of us, like, like these cool sales we'd have, and, like, we'd go in there with a mailer, and everyone, all the salesmen <laughs> would wear the same t-shirt, and it'd be like, what? dude, a rockin' <laughs> sale for <laughs> Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Rocktober, bro. Rocktober. Rocktober. <laughs> we would play the fucking... Yeah. Rock what the was our anthem? The fucking Ghostbusters theme song when someone bought a car. Like... <laughs> It would no. It was stupider than that. It was some stupid shit. That no, it was that stupid fucking. Oh, what was that band he loved? He loved like Striper. Boston and Striper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Striper. Yeah, what yeah, the yeah. fuck, bro? Oh my god. Yeah, it was Everything crazy. Was like built off of me, this band. me and Kevin sold cars all around the country. Like we had sales in like Kansas. Kansas. We had sales. How? In, Where? Uh, How? All over. Like, who's so, going like, to Cherry Hill from Kansas? Well, no, you got to understand, like, we were in a marketing company. So, like, essentially, like, we would sell direct mail. If you've ever gotten, like, a oh. key in the mail from a dealership, like, yo, come yes. here and, and get mail. your free prize. Like, yeah. we worked for the companies that sold those out. So, we would do a direct mailer campaign. We'd sell out, like, 15, 20,000, like, direct mail pieces to, like, a zip code or multiple zip codes. And we would, like, invite everybody to the sale. And, like, you just come to this dealership. You win a prize. And then our jobs, essentially, would be to, once the customers Are you came into the, the dealership. Big sale? Correct. Are you here for the oh big sale? Oh, my God, dude. And uh, we, our job was to talk them into buying a car. And, How and, many... and then we sold that as a service. So. We How many people fell for the fake key in the mail thing? A All lot. of them. All of really? them. Really? A lot. Because I would always throw mine away. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. I got, I got them. Yeah. Uh, I would say our like average return was like max 6%. Well, I was going to say, yeah, 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 like 5 6%. Yeah. <laughs> Still, that's pretty yeah. high for a mail. Well, of course, it's, it's like super you know, high. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was great. Yeah, the, the shitty ones yeah. were 1 2%. So, but yeah, yeah, the best ones were like 5 6%. And then like, yeah, they would come in and, you know, you talk to them, da-da-da, and like, it was cool for us because we were in our early 20s and we get to like travel all around and like it sucked because like we had to work like nine to nine like every fucking day. But then like we got to be in like different like towns and like cities and states that we never got to be in and stuff. And like it was it was a it was a wild we time. all all over Jersey, a little bit of PA. We were in Buffalo constantly. Remember that yeah. Viper up in Buffalo? Yeah, it was so fucking hot. And then yeah. when we went out to Kansas, uh, we went back to Buffalo at one point and I was like. Nick had a gig and he had to leave early. And I was like, dude, don't ever fucking come back. Please <laughs> just don't ever fucking come back. Like fucking stay. Like you're leaving this to go do that. What right. I said, if the, it's a Gandhi quote or something like that. If you chase two rabbits, you catch none. So just go chase one fucking rabbit. Like I literally said that to him. And I was like, just never come back, please. And Can then I got an offer. And then I got an offer and then like I moved back to Jersey and I like our office was in Jersey. So like I kind of like made the guy that we were working for like think that like I was moving to Jersey for like the business. And then like a month later, I just told him I'm like, yeah, I'm out. I'm going to sell cars or I'm sell cars. I'm going to fucking DJ. And then like I left the DJ full time and I left Kevin and Kevin like kept working and like he kept doing the sales for a while after that, a few months after that. And then eventually um, like. I don't know whatever happened with you, Kevin, like it, maybe it dried up or whatever, but then you ended up getting like a job actually selling cars and you yeah. were selling cars for a while, like out in central PA and uh, you're doing that. And then like uh, you were DJing on the side while you were selling cars. And then eventually you did. And then, then I remember me and you talking and you were like, yeah, like I'm trying to like DJ for a living and like car sales like sucks. And I was like, no, I feel you. And, uh, and then, yeah. And then like, I, I, uh, you know, and then we, uh, you know, like connect the dots with like clock and everything. And then the rest is history for you. It's fucking nuts. It's nuts, man. Everything nuts, happens man. for a reason. Bro, you guys yeah. could both still just be selling cars if you guys didn't just. Oh, you could be selling percent. cars in fucking Arizona right thousand now. Percent. Oh, I've done. Yeah, I've done sales in Phoenix, uh, Idaho, Bro, you've done them in California. Canada. Canada. I've done probably. You were 10 in Calgary in by yourself. I was in Calgary. I was in Edmonton, like fucking Western Canada. I was in like, uh, I used to do Stupid. sales in Idaho all the time. Uh, Spokane, Washington, fucking. Where else have I been? I've been, dude. The, you name it. Like it's unreal. He was doing all this while DJing in college. Also, yeah. by the way, so you were in college so selling cars. Listen, if anyone, 
I'm gonna talk to the audience real quick. I'm gonna do a yeah. shorty right now. I'm gonna like look right in the camera. Like if you think you're working hard, keep in mind that Nick was full time student, selling cars, DJing twenty weddings a year. Figure it the fuck out. Like yeah. you need you you you're working hard. You need to work harder. Like that's he's actually it. talking fucking to me, it. and he's like, "Do the I'm fucking social media clips." I don't you run fucking a business. Punk. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, post it... a real bitch. <laughs> <laughs> ah. That's just for the meme. For the meme, bro. Straight up for the meme. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Oh fuck it, a man. Fuck, you could still lot. be selling fucking fun, Mercury's. Or whatever the fuck you guys were selling. Yeah. We were a, a, a preferred vendor for Dodge Chrysler, Chrysler Jeep Ram. Yep. Dodge Chrysler yeah. Jeep Ram. We've got one of those yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, DCJR. Hell yeah. Uh, Fiat Alfa Romeo. Yeah, yeah. we've been, we've been yeah, around. Yeah, we Fiat too. Yeah, same company. They make Fiat first. Yeah, so the, uh, they're, they're all under the, Fiat under owns the same umbrella. Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Yep. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Wow. Yeah. Yep, so I cr- sat yep, in an Fiat Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo. It was the first time that. My ass hit the ground while I was inside a car. Was <laughs> Dude. Yeah, but it's $100,000, so why would First Alpha in New Jersey I sat in. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, we did some shit, bro. That was fun. Experienced some Here stuff, you know? Listen, yeah. all, part of the, all part of the journey. It's all part of somebody's plan. His right? name is Nick Spinelli. You can find him at the Nick Spinelli Show uh, on YouTube. Uh, you can listen to him on Sirius XM, Pitbull, Channel 13. I don't know what day. What day are you on? Fridays. Uh, uh, 11 a.m. Yeah, Fridays. Nice. 11 a.m. Yep. Congratulations on that, man. It's just some big stuff. Uh, it's fucking you, huge, dude. Thank you, man. You and Missy Thank Elliott you. just roaming around, hanging out, you know, you know just <laughs> chilling with each other. You know, <laughs> My girl, Missy. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I swear we tried. I, when that happened, I hit my boy up, Gabe, and I was like, listen, I know you know a rep or something. Can you do something? I don't yeah. know. And so, like, then they, nothing ever happened. And then literally Friday, you no know, Thursday, Kevin, I hit you up about the Missy FM thing. Yeah, you thing. hit me up. And I told – so a buddy of mine was flipping their station for a weekend to Missy FM because they were uh, naming a street after her in VA. Mm-hmm. And I told him, I said, uh, he wanted a logo done. And I was like, well, I, I don't do logos. But I was like, my boy Kevin does. I go, but here's the deal. If Kevin makes the logo, we get Nick Spinelli a signed autograph from Missy Elliott. Like, I told him that. I was like, that's the deal. And then all of a sudden, like, 20 minutes later, he hits me back. He goes, I think I found someone to do it. Never mind. So oh, I tried. Bro. I, I, I hit tried. Suri up the next day, and I was like, wait, did you guys need this today? <laughs> I tried. I nah, appreciate oh. you, man. Thank you. Nah, I tried. Right. There goes the camera. Listen, she, she did enough, man. Just sharing me, like, really helped me out and everything. And, like, you know, there's, a, like, bar stool and all that shit. Like, that all helped big time. So, yeah. you know. Bro, I, we didn't even talk about that original scooter video on bar stool, man. Like the, the fucking your groom took a spill on a scooter or some shit. Oh like yeah, that, that was the first time I was ever on Broad Street. Oh yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that that cool. was that was well, great. I thought that was cool. Yeah, until yeah, yeah, yeah until, man. It's it, it just it looks everything's like, cool until you do something cooler, right? It just it just it just it, it all comes back to the point. Just post content. The more po- content you post, the more the the more likely you are to have that video that gets picked up by someone like Barstool or something like that. You never know who's gonna share some shit, man. Like I, I'm telling you, like every video that ever like did really good for me, like I never thought it would. Like like those were all the videos that I thought like you know what I mean. Like and then I end up doing good. Like the ones I do think they're gonna do great, do okay. You know, like you just never fucking know. You guys, I have to pee so bad. Can Too we bad. Pee in your fucking it? chair. You know, we I fucking can't. Logan just peed on the yourself, pot. Kevin. I literally emptied. A, I tried to empty a bottle so I could pee into it, but then I was like, "How do I pee into this? Like on this? It's thing. tiny enough. It'll go in." No, it's, yeah, it is. That's for sure. But then there's the. All right, fuck you guys. I'm ending it. Nick, I love you. Shorty, I love. You. Love you too. Peace uh, out, guys. Wait, not leave. Stop. Thanks for checking out the Radio Shorty podcast with DJ Hi Kevin. New episodes drop every Tuesday wherever you listen to podcasts as well as videos on our YouTube page. For exclusive clips and highlights, check out our Instagram and TikTok at Radio Shorty Podcast, and we will see you next Tuesday.